Hello again viewers and welcome back to Charlie's House Call Auto Repair. Today we've got a 2002 Chevy Trailblazer. Customer complaint, the emergency brake doesn't work. Now we're going to get into this thing and see what's going on. I've already uh, hooked the code scanner up to it and we're going to check it for codes first. Now we're going to go to health report. Uh, let's see, transfer case. All right, I have no idea. Let's see. One speed active, two speed active, two wheel drive. I have no idea what any of this stuff means. Wow. Okay, we have two high. All wheel, four wheel, four high, four low. Oh. One speed, two speed, I'll go with two speed. We'll pick two speed, see what happens. Trailblazer EXT, I don't know, this isn't ex extended. This is just a short one. We'll put it on HVAC automatic. And I'll ask about a radio in a minute too, I'm sure. Fault report. We have one code, one on star, one rear seat audio, one powertrain. Okay, I see powertrain system, exhaust camshaft position system performance. Uh oh. See on star cellular phone antenna circuit. U1000 class 2 data link malfunction. Well, it's probably because the rear seat audio probably doesn't exist in this thing. Okay, but those aren't one of our concerns. All of our concerns right now are just the emergency brake, which is the customer complaint. I will advise them of the exhaust cam position system performance issue. Um, let's get this thing jacked up and uh, check it out. But first, we're going to take it out for a little quick drive and make sure that the uh, emergency brake does or does not work. Something else to note, there is no check engine light on. The check engine bulb check does work. So, oh, that really, oh, that's my jack. Alrighty, let's go. See if this parking brake works. Whoa, that, uh, that doesn't work. Well, definitely out of adjustment. Let's see if this even holds at all. And almost enough to hold the vehicle still at an idle. Put it in reverse. It holds. Give it gas, it holds. But it doesn't hold in drive. All right, so we're going to have to go in, double check the actual hardware in there. Make sure that the brake shoes are good. So let's get in there, break it down. All right, let's get the jack underneath the rear end. Get the wheels up off the ground. Let's get the jack ready. And we can take the hubcaps off. A little tension on it but not enough to get the wheels off the ground and we'll go ahead and get the lug nuts loosened up and we'll take these center caps off just insert a screwdriver here and just lift it out a little bit pull it off set that down on the ground same thing on the other side and set that down on the ground get these lug nuts loosened up because it's easier to get at the manual tools than it is to get to all the power tools. All the power tools are buried deeper into the trunk. And just do this manually. Probably, probably be a little bit quicker. Yeah, 
Wow, that's tight. Somebody over it. Oh, our torque beats a little bit. Yeah. I'd make an air hammer noise, but to go with the high speed, but I don't think that would work, so we'll just speed it up real quick right here. want to take that one all the way off yet because we don't have the thing lifted all the way up here yet. Now we're going to go get the other side. Alright, they're all loosened up. Okay, and back to impact driver. Okay, and before removing the last lug nut, let's get this thing up in the air. And as always, we gotta go grab the jack stands, get them underneath here. tricky to find a good spot for a jack stand underneath this thing. Wow, okay. Right there, I have to do. And no, these are not Harbor Freight jack stands. Just in case you guys weren't aware, I just did a recent recall on a couple of different kinds of jack stands from Harbor Freight because they were found to collapse. So if uh, you recently purchased a pair of jack stands from Harbor Freight, I suggest going to their website and checking that out whether or not yours is under that recall. on a jack stand so now we got the jack stand the jack and the other jack stand supporting the weight of the vehicle and get this last lug nut off and you guys know about as much of this as I do let's see what we got going on in here tire off vehicle all right let's see what we got now yeah, brake pads about a little over an eighth of an inch of material I can't see the inside because of the shadows out here but, uh, ooh, I don't know if you guys can see that or not that's let's see if I can get an angle here where you guys can see this oh this lighting is horrible this way bar link that's pretty shot the bottom out pad that's supposed to be in here completely missing frame it all looks pretty good and the sway bar links all need to be replaced all right well, this looks like it won't be too hard to take apart let's go find a uh, Let's see, that's a 14 millimeter bolt. We'll get the caliper off. Yep. Show you guys this many times. A 14 millimeter wrench, a 13 millimeter wrench. I don't have enough room to get in here with my socket wrench. So we're going to take this wrench, put it up here. We're going to take the 13 millimeter and we're going to lock it. Can you guys see my hands up here? No, of course not. Oh, 
14 millimeter wrench, and the 13, lock it right on there like that. And then you can put that on your bolt. Probably help if I was loosening it, wouldn't it? Let's try again in the other direction. And we'll loosen this one up also. I'm trying to do it with just the one wrench. Might not work. Get these little bolts out of here. Put them in the hubcap. That's pretty tight. And pull on it. Get it to rock a little bit, that'll push the caliper back in a little. Push this piston in so you can slide it off. Boy, this thing is yeah, dirty. Now, this is an aluminum caliper, it's extremely lightweight. Probably put this on a hook, but there's a big old shelf back here with missing parts to put it on, so we'll put it there. That brake's not too jammed in there. That one's not too jammed in there. They probably could stand to be cleaned up, but we're not going to worry ourselves about those. I'm going to get in here, get the 17 millimeter bolts to get the bracket off. I stand corrected. That's an 18 millimeter. We got the uh, 18 millimeter six point. Grab the breaker bar. Let's get these loosened up. Sorry about the lighting, folks. They're outside. The sun's up on my back. I'm just gonna grab the ratchet. how I messed up my wrench in the first place. And I get the back of the wrench wedged up against the sway bar. I can't get the socket off. There we go. And we'll get the top one out. And remove the top bolt. going to take the uh, bracket right off. So now those brake pads aren't looking all too bad. A little bit more wear on the inside than the outside, but that's probably because these brake shoes are, uh, or brake pads are dragging a little bit. And there's some kind of weirdness right here and here. I don't know. Oh, somebody in this design they added metal to this for whatever reason. Probably to help uh, it not wear into the hardware brackets as much. And uh, as you can see, trailing edge of that squealer. They've also got one on the leading edge of the squealer. I don't understand that on inside and outside. Oh, there's some weird brake pads. All right, let's get this. Let's get this off. Uh, Let's get this rotor off. All right, that was nice and easy. All right. Now, in case any of you guys are not familiar with this, this is a one-piece brake shoe. Self-adjusters right here on the actual cal on the actual mechanical uh, piston, and down here. In here, there's a little clip, a small bolt through it that ties it to the rear axle housing. Be super, super careful with those if you ever have to take them apart. It's a nightmare if you break one. 
good material. I still see writing on there. That parking brake's in good shape. We're gonna go grab some brake cleaner anyways and just clean up uh, all of this soot. Because we're gonna be making a mess. We got a uh, pet training pad. Take this and set this right underneath the brakes. And then because there's a light breeze, I'm gonna do some wrenches to hold it down. And I got set up just like this. And get this right underneath here so when we start spraying all of this junk, we can uh, collect the mess, not get it all over the ground. One of these days, Eric, I'll get it. All right, get in here. Spray. Oh. Mm, did I spray the camera? A little bit. All right, so I got that cleaned up. Rotor looks good. Inside of the rotor looks good. There's no discoloration. Well, maybe what do we got here? Yeah, a little discoloration probably from even unevenness. And uh, this side just looks like it needs to be adjusted. Here's the adjuster up here on the top. So let me get uh, my screwdriver and we can start tapping that and make the adjustment. All right, now to start adjusting this, just get this little wheel right here and start rolling that. You see the gap right in here will start opening up a little bit. Okay, we've opened it up about a sixteenth of an inch. Let's see how we are for fitment. All the way on, moves rather easily, no drag. Comes right back off with no problem. So we need to adjust it some more. A little bit more. Try again. It's still a little too sloppy. Do it some more. You gotta be careful though. You don't want to go too far with it. There are no adjustment access holes in the front or the back of this. So this is the only way to adjust these. Okay, we're starting to get a little drag going on. Make sure we don't have a big lip on this rotor. No, we do not have a big lip on our rotor. All right. Okay. Now let's make sure operation works correctly. Cables pulled all the way up and it's locked. Okay, good. And we let the emergency brake all the way back down. Get moving again. The drum still comes back off extremely easily, so we're going to adjust it a little bit more. A couple more clicks. And try it again. All right, now we're starting to get some drag, so we've got to back it back off. Just a little bit. You do that by putting it on the bottom and just tapping your screwdriver forward. You can also get up behind it work it a little bit but you can only do it like one step at a time this would be extremely slow to do it this way although you do have a lot more control and let's try it again all right here we go we still got our 
flopping around a little bit. That might be under adjusted a hair. A little bit more. There we go. Now let's see, we got marks. Line that up. All right. We'll call that side adjusted. And we'll get over to the other side. Get the wheel off on over on this side. Tire underneath. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to bump you. Get the tire underneath the vehicle. And remove the caliper, caliper bracket. Now I can move the caliper, remove the caliper and caliper bracket on this side. Again, using the uh, two wrench method. Wow, that baby's being a little difficult. Sway bar. Yeah. Let me let you guys see this. That is really bad. I'm going to be replacing that too eventually. Well, that piston moved nice and easy. So we got the whole assembly off. Equal amounts of brake pad in, in board and out, about a quarter of an inch. So they do not need any attention. Now, what in the world is going on here? I don't know. The hardware on this side is new. Now, why would the hardware be new on this side but not on the other side? I don't know. Uh, in any case, we'll take this and set it on top of the sway bar. No, we won't. Okay, I'll be right back. We gotta go grab a hook. In case any of you guys missed this the last time I did one of these, the Stokes 12 inch extension hook for bird feeders. These things work really great when you've got a place to use them. Hopefully I do. So we don't have to hang it from the brake line. And just like that. I don't know if you can see this down here. Yeah, okay. So we're clearly safely hung. We're not pulling on the brake line. Let's get this rotor off. This one was excessively sloppy also. Now let's get our pet trainer underneath the brake assembly. Give it a really good douching down a little brake clean, especially around the adjuster, around the brakes, get all this junk and duck out of here. And about does it for the end of that. Bearing seal's got a little yuck around it. And let's get this side adjusted. Figure out how much we need to go first. And it's not actually not all too bad. A little bit of rust on the inside of this, but that's not too, too bad. This side doesn't want to move. Maybe this one's in the opposite direction. Ah, yes. This one goes in the opposite direction. Let's 
right in. Still wicked loose. Try to not keep getting my arm in your way. Uh, starting to feel just a little bit of drag. A little bit of struggle to get it off. So I'm going to call that one adjust, adjust it right where it is. You got about a sixteenth of an inch gap in the adjuster. Again, no breaker, no wear in the brakes. You do not, especially with this style of brake, you do not want it to have, with these, you don't want them to have a light drag because they'll end up seizing on you and breaking. And G, I don't know where GM came up with this design, but it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's cheap, it's junk. It works, but that's how the adjustment goes. Try to get the rotor back on the same spot and get a little indent right there from the removal screw holes. Line it up with that. And we'll uh, reassemble everything here. And just double check real quick how much that brake lever moves. Okay, let's see how much this brake lever moves. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. That's where we want it. Just a light pull. And that parking brake works probably beautifully. We're going to find out in a few minutes after we get the wheels back on. Now, something else that I noticed while I was in here and doing this, as Eric would say, enhance, enhance. That can be a potential problem. This guy's going to need some framework in the very near future. Because this is the upper control arm. This right here is the upper control arm that holds the axle in place. And if he hits a bump under load or slams on the brakes, this reinforcement here probably won't go very far, but it might bend, and that bend could cause this bolt to break off in the frame. And if it works out, he's going to lose the stability on the rear axle. All right, so at this point, we'll grab our caliper bracket bolts. Roll the caliper bracket back up off the hook, get it in place, line up the holes, and get the bolt started, get up here get the other bolt, get, get it started, there it goes, and then we'll go ahead and get these tightened down. Top one on, push the brake wheel in, bottom one on. Remember, always get them started by hand before taking the impact driver to them. And repeat the same thing on the other side. breaker bar so we can get our three ugga duggas. There we go. This thing probably could use a thorough brake overhaul. 
but that's not what we were being paid to do today. Again, two wrench method. That's about one ugly dugger, maybe. Let's get this up here where I can get more, a little, a little more leverage. All right, and it's all tight. Put the wheel back on, wrap it up. And I don't know if you guys can see this or not. We got about four inches to lift this tire, and this tire's big, it's heavy. I put my foot underneath the edge of the tire with it a little bit further back than it needs to be so I can roll it up onto my foot and then I can use my foot to help me lift it and line it up, put it on, one lug nut on the top, one lug nut on the bottom. I put the rest of the lug nuts on and torque them down. Remember again, always spin your lug nuts on a couple of threads before trying to hit them with an impact because if you're cross-threaded even a little bit and you hit it with an impact, you just mess that stud up for good. All right there. Lightly snug, lightly slug, lightly snug. Always do this in a crisscross pattern. We're all lightly slug now. We let the jack down. Now we can go and let it down. Go ahead and torque down your lug nuts. Just go back, double check them. center cap back on be particularly careful to mo note if you see something on that looks like a valve stem like this right here make sure that this part always points towards the valve stem because there's often notches in here and these will only fit a certain way on Mark, towards the valve stem. And well, let's go see how this emergency brake works now. Parking brake. His chances are extremely good. If you've got an emergency, it probably won't stop you. I think that parking brake works fine now. I'm 
reverse. I'd have to say I think it works. So, if you guys found this one useful, feel free to comment, like, and please subscribe. I really appreciate the views and the subscriptions. Have a great day. And don't forget, you got no more excuses. Go pick up those wrenches. <laughs>